Okay, this is Gamer Blave, and we are here with another episode of Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. If you missed the last episode, or you just want to be caught up on what is going on, then guys, this is it. We are here. We are at the Gates of Eden, and we, we've come through the sealed gate, or we, we did the, the, the big battle that's right outside this thing. This, this device scanned us. And we had, you know, kind of some exposition about like a foreman talking about, hey, you know, do we do we need to do we actually want to find out who we are? And, you know, guys, we're not going to come this far and, and turn back. So, you know, we are going to go in. But first, first, I do think we're going to use a couple of med packs here, even though Borman and Pharaoh do have the ability to um, to, you know, heal themselves uh, if, if we, you know, find some guys to eat. Uh, I don't think that that's really going to be happening, so let's go ahead and use... We've got eight med kits. Let's go ahead and use them. So, we're healed a, a little bit, so... Let's travel down into Eden. I could swear that I've been here before. I feel it deep inside. I've got a... I've seen this star before. And all those crashed flying machines. The stories are true. They came from Eden. Yeah, I've got one of those feelings like there's going to be uh, some some robots down here, guys. A few robots. We've got eleven points. Um, I mean, I don't know what what would we want here. I don't I don't know if there's really anything. Man, Borman tanked that so well in that last in that last fight, didn't he? If you, if you missed that, then, um, then I would definitely recommend checking it out, guys. Checking it out. We ended up having to do it twice, um, uh, which kind of sucked, but hey, you know, it happens, guys. Uh, that's the second time in this playthrough, which, you know, all told, uh, well, anyway, guys, we'll, we'll get back to that, but let's, let's pick this note up. Let's check it out. Military recall. Command is in a state of total panic following the loss of Orbital Z-1. An order has been issued to return all militarized bots and equipment directly to Unit Theta. My suspicions are confirmed. Without a shadow of a doubt, we are at war. I can only hope that this is quick, regardless who wins. Man. Well, I mean, you know, if we're at war, I'd prefer not to lose. Gee whiz. That guy does not care. Look at all this. I'm going to I'm going to go down this path. You know, I feel going left and going right first and then we'll go straight. Might be the way to go. I don't know, guys. Ooh, I was more med kits. The med pack was going to be there and boom. The med pack was there. How do you explain that? Well, now that is really weird. Like, that the place would be, like, left in exactly the state. Like, in terms of, like, an item just being left on the, on the, uh, table. Just like you guys left it. I mean, like, was this place sealed off when you left? That's, that's just really odd. Uh, project canceled. Evacuation orders have been given, and a destruction order has been issued for all research, including the healthy biological subjects. This has upset a number of us, not just for ethical reasons, but for the sheer loss of what we have accomplished. The news has hit Ingmar particularly badly. He has locked himself in the birthing chamber with the subjects and refuses to open the door. Oh my goodness. Guys, I don't really know what is going on. What's to, what to expect down here? I mean, you know, they they were clearly doing some experimentation on. You know, I mean, I guess the question is, did they actually create these mutants, or did they like, you know? 
uh, find them and then we're doing experiments on them. You know, I mean, to me, it seems like, well, they probably made them. But at the same time, it's like if they made them, then why, um, then why now are they only making like, uh, you know, the robots and uh, things like that. Why Why didn't they, like, manufacture, I don't know, for lack of a better, uh, well, not lack of a better word, why didn't they manufacture more mutes? Oh, my gosh, look at this place, guys. This is a huge open area. Oh, those machines. Whoa. Oh, quiet. Let's try not to wake them up. Yeah, let's freaking try. Man. And those ones, those are some big ones. We haven't had to ma mess with any of them that are that size. Wow. This is the place I was dreaming about. Can you believe it? Eden. This makes you question your whole life, right? What happens if the answers you seek are around the corner? Will you want to know? I wonder if whoever I'm... Uh, controlling is the one that's going to be like talking and reacting to everything. I don't believe it. I can't believe it. Uh, yeah, there's a playground. Let's check this note out. Peace talks fail. It is a tense and dreadful time. We have heard whispers that the peace talks have broken down irreparably. And to confirm this somewhat, Command has just ordered us to consider Elysium as hostile and to forcibly remove, if necessary, any Elysium diplomats and scientists from the facility. This is a sad day for us all. And yeah, that would... That would suck. I mean, people people that you've been working with and you've just got to treat as hostile, that's, that's crazy. Unreal. A tree and grass... Just like outside. Yeah, the fact that it's kind of been able to maintain this habitat for, you know, however long, pretty impressive. That being said, I mean, if all of these, if, if these guys were born here, then I guess it hasn't been that, well, actually, I don't know what their lifespan is. I have absolutely no idea how old they are. So, I don't know. This place is messing with my head. This can't be a picture of me, right? I don't know about that. It is starting to look like it. It may very well be Borman. It may very well be. Either that or it's a weird coincidence. One of them proverbial coinkydinks. Uh, we've got some uh, carcal matter over here on the uh, table. Ugh. All this time we're talking about skeletons that don't look like us. This one kind of does. There might have been mutants in Eden. Bone density report 12W. Regression of the regression of in skeletal mass against in soft tissue mass equals total body mass. Uh, skeletal mass in uh, passerine birds, black squirrels, solid rodents, gray diamonds, bats. Okay, hold on a second, guys. What, what are we getting at here? <laughs> Raw data is in the electronic supplementary material. Uh, to the mass of the mammal skeletons, 15% was added to account for the fact that mammal bones are not pneumatized but contain marrow. Regression slopes do not differ significantly. Comparison of skeletal mass using analysis of covariance demonstrate that the mass of bird skeletons is indistinguishable from that of rodents. So, I mean, were they, like, trying to, like, change skeletons with i mean like what 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 does that have to, i mean guys i don't know 
Fortunately, I'm not involved in any of that kind of research because uh, it would go horribly awry if it was, or if I was. But, uh, my goodness. Okay, data analysis 67J. The data yielded a maximum likelihood of 0.2 PNG for uh, two haplotypes, combining A and C on the one hand, and Y1 and Y2 on the other, and of zero when all four haplotypes were examined. The 95% confidence in interval uh, for PNG was zero and 0 0.83 for two haplotypes and zero and 0 0.28 for four haplotypes. The two haplotype confidence interval is considerably larger because haplotypes A and C were combined, which masks the fact that in southern T1 domestic pigs, haplotype A is more frequent than haplotype C. Guys, what the heck is a haplotype? So this has something up, uh, to do with uh, <laughs> manufacturing Borman. I guess this is the, the building or, no, or the, the room uh, where they did that. They definitely utilized those uh, haplotypes in order to do that. I'm guessing uh, that that first one must have been ducks. You guys, I don't know, guys. Uh, who, who knows what's going on? Whoa! There's a dude's body in here. Look at all this stuff. Oh, man. Look, the screen with the lights. If we want answers, that's a good place to start. Um, there's a lot of screens with lights. We huddle around the screen. The words, Mutant Project, blink on and off in big red letters. The screen turns black, then explodes with a flurry of flashing images, faster than we can take in. I catch glimpses of mutants in test tubes, animals in cages, strands of code, something called DNA. The screen freezes on one final image. An employee profile. A scientist of the Mutant Project. It says his name is Ingmar Edison. His face. When we see his face, those eyes staring back at us. We couldn't believe it. It was him. Holy crap. Profile says his status was revoked after stealing mutant experiments from the lab. Memories come flooding back. We were the experiments. They raised us in tubes and played games with our DNA. Made us freaks. The Elder was part of this. Happy endings died with the ancients. Why didn't he tell us? Who is he? The room spins. The truth comes flooding back into my brain. Everything I know is a lie. I lose my balance. As the room turns black, a voice crackles onto the radio. Ghost-like, ethereal, like the ancients call it down from space. Come on, Center Sweden. Come in, come on, Center Sweden. I repeat. Command Center Sweden. Command Center Sweden. Come in, Command Center Sweden. Well, I mean, maybe the elder was just like felt really bad about them experimenting on them and, and like saw the the intelligence and um I don't know, the sentience and was like, guys, we can't be doing this anymore and, and took him out. I don't know, guys. I mean, so, I mean, you know, maybe the elder is not all that awful, but at the same time, ah, that ending definitely was like, uh, teeing up more. I know there's DLC. Uh, I will I will think about... Uh, I, I will meditate upon it, guys. I will meditate 
uh, upon it. Uh, definitely let me know what you think about that. Um, uh, you know, I, I definitely, I, I really enjoyed my time with the game. Um, I, I am, I am, um, I, you know, I, the ending, the, <laughs> the ending, you know, I, I just, I, you know, I, I kind of wish games and, and I've been, t I've been talking about to, to anyone who will like listen to me wax lyrical about stuff. I've been talking about how I don't like the trend with TV shows. It seems like every TV show and, and almost every movie now, nowadays, like won't have just a proper ending where they just like will tie everything in a nice bow and you can be like, oh yeah. Like, so every season has to have like this ridiculous cliffhanger where you have to wait a year to find out what happens in the next season. You know, it's not, they're not just gonna, uh, you know, tie it up and then say, okay, well, that's, that's, um, that was a good experience. Uh, and then, you know, the next season come on because what happens so often is <laughs> what happens so often and sucks is shows get canceled. So like, I'll see the first episode of a show and I'll be like, oh, this looks kind of cool. And then I'll read online or something like that because Google just knows what's happening in my life that I've like watched an episode of a show, you know, that came out like a few years ago or whatever that that show got canceled, uh, you know. Uh, and and that the end of that series was a cliffhanger. Oh, the end of the first season was a cliffhanger or something like that, and it got canceled. And it's like, well, I'm not interested in watching a show that you know is going to take me up to a cliff and then just leave me hanging. I, I'm just not interested. <laughs> so I'll stop watching. Um, so I don't know. It's kind of like um, it's it's just like the I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's a, a Pretentious, that's not really the word that uh, that I'm looking for, but I guess for lack of a better one, I'll go with it right now. Uh, presumptuous, maybe, might be a better one. You know, you're just kind of like presuming that you're going to be a successful enough. You're presuming that the audience is going to want more if you, if you drag them along. In my opinion, you know, give me a good experience give me a good story that I can be like, you know what? That was great. And let me decide if I want more. Don't, don't, you know, slap me in the face and say, we got no ending for you. We've got no ending for you. If you want any kind of res feeling of resolution, then you've got to, you've got to buy more. <laughs> you've got to buy more or invest more time. So that whole trend which has completely permeated movies and uh, I mean, TV more so than movies, but even movies, guys. Uh, and, and then even in, in, in video games, uh, to a certain extent, you know, uh, it's just, uh, I don't like it. But anyway, so for this game, I, I have really, I have really enjoyed it. I am glad that we didn't play it on Iron Man because we, <laughs> there were two times where we died right so we would have completely lost all of our progress in the game um and then we would have <laughs> we would have had to play the whole game over again right there the last battle we died uh we would have had to play the whole game over again if i wanted to get past it and then had that mm, somewhat unsatisfying ending <laughs> for for a, a reward so uh that's that's kind of how i feel about that guys um, but all told, I did really, I did really enjoy it. I thought it was, I thought it was a, a really, a really good one. Um, in terms of a couple of other things I am, uh, thinking about playing right now. And, and honestly, uh, since I played, uh, ahead in this game, um, these other series or my other series will probably have started by the time that this one comes out. Um, but the only one I guess that would be worth mentioning just because I think the gameplay, at least from what I have, um, seen of the game, uh, is going to be somewhat similar because I was kind of in a, the reason that I picked this one up is because I was kind of in an ex commie vibe. I, if you've, if you've been following along with, with the series, the reason I picked it up is because one of my friends was talking about XCOM too, and uh, I wanted to play something like that. Uh, but you know, I, I, you know, I've still kind of got a, a hankering for, I, I always liked those tactical RPGs. 
Uh, I may not be good at them, but I do like them. Uh, but anyway, Wasteland 3, uh, I picked it up. It was on sale on Steam for, I think, like 13 bucks. So I picked it up. I am thinking about starting a Wasteland 3 playthrough. Um, and and uh, I, that one will probably be longer than this one. Uh, but, uh, but I think that one will be pretty fun. I think that one will be pretty fun. And then I got a couple of other things that I'm thinking about, uh, uh, thinking about doing as well. So that is, that is pretty much it guys. So anyway, this is going to be a short and sweet episode. We've, we've, uh, played through mutant year zero road to Eden and we did roll the credits. So anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And I really, really hope to catch you in the next game. Peace.